Hi. <laughs> Big breath, because we're about to dive into exponential and log functions with yaymath.org and yaymath in studio. I'm Robert Adud. I really like this stuff. I think it's really fascinating how we can use math to discover how substances grow or populations decline or fossils decay over time. And uh, once we understand what we're doing, it's, it's pretty fascinating. So let's just jump right in. And here we have a problem posed. A substance burns at a rate of 15% every hour, so it's decreasing, okay? If it begins with 120 milligrams, how long before it becomes half of its initial amount? All right, it's kind of a cool question if something is going down 15% every hour. And the formula that we can use to discover that uh, amount of time is right here, okay? So let's dissect what each of these values means. This Y is the final amount. That's the one we're solving for, the final amount. This A, this is the initial amount. Rate is R here, and this is increments of time. And that time can be based on the problem specifically, sometimes years. In this case, it looks like the increments of, times, of time is every hour. Okay, so we plug in everything that we need or everything we know into the formula and calculate what we need. So let's go ahead and discover how much is left. So we know, for example, the starting amount is 120. That's going to go here. Okay, 1 minus. The reason it's minus is that this particular problem is a decay problem. The substance is going down. Had the rate been positive, like plus here, that would be something like if a population is growing, or even money in a bank account is growing with interest over time, that would be adding the rate, whatever that percentage is, to one, which would represent the 100% that you're adding to. But in this case, we're subtracting because we read into the problem and the substance is burning, it's burning down. So it's actually decaying, it's decreasing in its amount, right? And we're actually looking for the amount of time it would take, which T we don't know, for the 120 to become half of its initial amount. Half of its initial amount. So that would mean the 120 needs to reduce to 60. All right? And now we have a single variable in there, which is T in this case. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve. We can divide both sides by 120 to simplify our lives. That it goes. So this is 0.5 equals 1 minus 0 0.15 is 0 0.85. So that's 0 0.85 to the t. Okay. All right, the way to solve these is to use logs to our advantage. So if we take the log of both sides, log here, and log here, this t can move down in front of the log. So that becomes t times log of 0.85. And this is log of 0.5 equals. And if we want to get t by itself, we divide both sides by log of 0.85, log of 0.85. and we should get our answer. This would go. Let's see what happens. Handy dandy calc. There we go. Okay. We'll do 0.5 log divided by 0.85 log equals 4.27. Time equals 4.27, in this case, hours, okay? And it makes sense. In one hour, it goes down 15% of itself, right? Another hour, 15% of that. Another hour, 15% of that. After four hours, it probably went down 50% from 120 to 60. This amount of time right here is a very important increment. 
This is called half-life. Let's define that right now because it's going to feed into the next problem. The next problem talks about half-life. Half-life is the amount of time it takes for a substance to reduce to half of its initial amount. Again, half-life is a measure of time. It's the amount of time it takes for a substance to reduce to half of its initial amount. Okay, great. So this next problem is a half-life problem, and we're going to use it to backdate fossils. Let's first present the problem. The half-life the half -life of carbon-14 is 5,760 years. Suppose 5% of carbon-14 exists on the bones of a fossil that was discovered. 5% of what we expected, the expected amount of carbon-14 in what would otherwise be in a live creature. Maybe it was some dinosaur or saber-toothed tiger or something like that. But we see, we observe 5% of carbon-14 within the bones of this fossil. If there's 5% left, knowing that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,760 years, how long ago did this particular animal pass on? Which is kind of amazing, right? Again, let's discuss what half-life means. This is the amount of time it takes for a substance to go to half of its original amount. You'll notice it's a lot of time. So carbon-14 is an element that, that, that sort of dies off, that disintegrates very slowly. Therefore, we can use that to backdate fossils for when they're actually uh, living and breathing. So what we need to do is we need to understand the rate of decay of this particular fossil. Let's introduce the formula for that. Students call it APERT. A equals P E R T. This is just like the formula from before. You'll notice this end amount here, this is the final amount. This is the final amount. This is the initial. It's also called the principal, the starting amount. This is E, the exponential function we talked about before. This is the rate. And this is the time. Okay, in this case, time will be measured in years. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to find the rate of decay of this fossil. Let's do it. If something starts at one unit, hypothetically, you know, just to make it simple, we have E, the rate we don't know, the rate of decay. The time in this case is 5760. And it takes 5760 years to go from one, an initial amount of one, to half of itself. That's what half life is. So I'm going to put 0.5 here. Some students, when they're starting out, they actually like to make this something easier. Like if you start at 10, you would end with 5. It's totally fine to put it that way. Start with 10, end with 5. It takes 5760 years. And then we're going to solve for the rate of decay. All right, here's how we do it. Divide both sides by 10. Gone. 5 over 10 is 0.5, which is exactly what we wrote before when I had 0.5 and 1. This was 1 here. E to the 5760 yep, T. And if we want to cancel this E, we do ln of both sides. This is ln here, ln here. This is gone. ln and E cancel each other. We have ln 0.5 equals 5760T. Divide both sides by 5760. 5760. Gone. Yay, math. <laughs> I don't want to mess up the problem. So I'm going to put it over. Actually, I can, I can solve on the calc here. That's just people walking by and looking through the glass trying to get their education on. All right, so we got 0.5 ln. It's kind of cool, we're doing all these high-level calculations right on the phone. Divided by 5760, yeah. There it is, negative 0.00012. Oh, that's R, excuse me, R. It's the rate, solving for the rate. 
R equals negative 0.00012. So it's a very, very slow rate of decay. You'll notice the rate is negative, just like the one where the, the, the element was burning off at 15%. So that rate was negative. So too, this rate is also negative. So we're going to use this rate to backdate the fossil that has 5% carbon-14 left. We'll use the same formula again. We'll use the same one. We'll use that same rate. So in the problem, we could do a rate of negative 0.00012. And the problem is saying, how long ago did it die? How long did it take? So that's a T, we don't know. E, and now the challenging part of the problem. 5% is left. 5% is left. Knowing what we know about percents, we can assume, just as an easy example, 100 could be a starting amount. So imagine it had like 100 grams to start, some sort of random amount, it won't matter. And the final amount is 5% of that. 5% of 100 is 5. So this would be the setup to solve for the amount of time it takes to go from 100 units of carbon-14 to 5 units of carbon-14 at this ridiculously slow rate. It's a very small, small number, and it's negative meaning it's decaying, it's getting smaller. And now we solve for T. Divide both sides by 100. Divide both sides by 100. Gone. We get that 0.05, which makes sense. We're talking about 5%. Equals E to the negative 0.00012T. I'm so excited to be able to help you learn this stuff because it's really challenging. It's not explained appropriately. LN both sides. Gone. We get ln.05 equals negative 0.00012t. Divide both sides by negative 0.00012t. Negative, let's write it out, man. Let's write it out. Don't cut corners, baby. Negative 0.00012, gone. And we get time equals, all right, I'm curious. Find out what it is. Here we go, 0 0.05 ln divided by 0 0.00012 negative equals, wow, 24,964 point four four years. And pretty incredible how that works. Uh, and it makes sense if you think about it, because if it started at 100, in around 5,000, 6,000 years, it became 50. And then 100, then it became 50, then it became 25, then it became 12.5. You see where this is going. Every cycle is 5,760 years. So you keep adding 5,760, 5,760, 5,760. And you keep slashing this in half, 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 until you get to 0 0.05, or 5%, or really just basically 5. 100 reduces to 5, and it takes this many years, which is about, like, what, 5 cycles of 5,760 years. That's a good way to stay in command of what's going on here, right? It starts at 100 and turns to 5, so it's like half, 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 a certain number of times until you get down to 5. All right. We're going to do one more. I know this is a long one, but I'd rather just save it in one video. Or maybe not. What do you think? Do it. Yeah. yeah, just keep in it. Yeah, keep, it. keep in it. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, because then you're forcing people to, like, remember the same thing. Okay, cool. Last problem. Let's rock this. Here we have a population problem. Suppose the population is growing at a rate of 25% each year since 1990, with the population at the time equal to 1 million. At this same rate, what would the population predicted to be um, in 2020? So basically 30 years from there, okay? So in this case, we'll notice that since the population is growing at 25%, this is no longer the exponential function because it's not this continuous rate of growth that's naturally occurring, right? It's sort of a, 
it's an artificial 25% every time, okay? So we're gonna use the non-exponential function and we're gonna go back to this guy. Y equals A one, in this case, plus R to the T, okay? So let's find out. In this case, we know the starting amount is one million. That's the starting amount that goes there. But you know, we can just call it one and just assume that this uh, calculation now deals in millions, okay? So this is one million, to make our lives a bit simpler. One plus the rate, in this case, 25%, will be 0.25. And then we have an amount of time from 1990 to 2020, that's 30 years. And we're solving for the population there. So this becomes one times 1.25 to the 30. All right, it's taking 1.25 times itself 30 times. And we'll see that new population. Right, here it is. Boom, okay. Okay, here it goes, 1.25 to the 30. Whoa, look at that. That's an explosive population. That is 807.8. Isn't that nuts? That's massive population growth, 25%. That's huge. That means for every four people that live there, the next year, 25% more would be five, a quarter of that, so one more. That can't, is that right? That's incredible growth. 1.25 to the 30. Yeah, yeah. So that would mean in 30 years, whatever city that is, <laughs> or country for that matter, is expected to have a population of 807 million or almost 808 million, which we could see is the massive power in these types of calculations. You can use the math to help you predict what the population will be. And so that you could think of things like infrastructure, building, uh, water supply, roads, schools, hospitals, to service all those people and say, we need to have that done in 30 years to accommodate this number of people. It's really important in terms of like planning for population growth in order to be able to come through for your society. All right, I know this video was long. Thank you for watching it. I hope you learned and I hope it was as interesting to you as it was to me. All right, bye, thank you. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go decompose now as a fossil.